Hey guys, this is Tiana Tuomo I'm a top rank knockout, and I want to give a shout out to Sauce Talk Podcast. Thank you, you know the vibes. Yes, this is Sauce Talk, Showtime, Shout News Midi. See, I got the man himself, Mr. Sugar Hill. First off, champ, thank you for your time. This is this man needs no introduction. Sugar Hill on Sauce Talk. That's, that's right, that's right, that's right. You're looking at this fight, you're here maybe potentially scouting the winner of this fight. How do you see the main event between David and uh, Caleb? Oh, uh, let the best man win. I'm not yeah, going for anyone, but you know, uh, let the best man win. I guess, how, how do you see the fight? Like, who, who would you favor in it based on the attributes? The physicality of Cole. Um, I mean, I I like Plant because he's the underdog. Uh, Benavidez like talk his talk, but you know it's intriguing to see him try to walk his walk. So I like the fact that Plant, you know, he's the underdog, and um, if he prevails, you I mean you know the Canelo fight, everything uh, goes in hands with like. Him being one of the champions of the world. I mean, Griffiths, man. Can you guys see? You know, I guess, can you see Caleb Plant on boxing? David Benavides in this fight? Yeah. Yeah? Smart, man. Yeah. Um, it's, this fight is going to be based off of who's in the best shape. Um, that's what's going to determine who's the champion. Have you seen like the videos that have come out of David, like the shape he's in? He has like abs now. Like, you know, what, what do you make of like the shape that he's in coming into this fight? Oh, uh, he's supposed to have abs. I mean, yeah. it's about... <laughs> well, he's never had abs before. That's no, I mean, he's supposed to have them, though. He's <laughs> all, he just never had them. Right? He's supposed to have them. Right? <laughs> um, strength is strength. You know, uh, Plant always had them. So can we can we say, look, Plant always had them. Man. I mean, come on, dude. I'm not really into the abs, you know. Um, I'm doing better now. Yeah, talk to me about that, bro. Um, just, you gotta get it, get rid of um, contaminated people in your life. And sometimes it'll be the worst people that you want to get rid of. Sometimes you just gotta um, live and grow and change through the things that you know you go through in life to get you better. It don't matter if you gotta um, take off from eating or drinking or fighting or whatever your vice is, you know. Uh, you, just, you, know, you gotta get better, so you wanna you wanna take the time to get better. And I took the time to get better. I'm sorry I've been off for so long. Sorry to all my fans. I'm still the champion. I've been still working. Uh, I just, you know, I wasn't in condition enough to fight uh, mentally, physically. I just wasn't ready. I wasn't ready at the time. Uh, sometimes you take loss, but some loss is not really loss. They learn a lesson. Uh, I'm better now. I feel like a person. How long did it take you to get better, to get to this loss? I want to say yeah, it took me every uh, since I last got in the ring. It was the Montiel fight, right? Yeah. Since the Montiel fight, uh, I had to. Uh, Reevaluate myself, reconsider things, and uh, get myself better. How difficult was that process to kind of realize, hey, okay, get rid of some people and change Very, very difficult. And that's what took so much time, like, you know, uh, no entourage. You know, uh, I live that flashy life. I, live, I know what it feel like to have it. You know, I have millions pouring in at a time. And everybody happy and every, you know, things. And you don't realize, like, people around you, they see that too. So, you know, I'm better now. So it's just like, like, build from here. You know? So my objective is just to get strong and keep living from here. I'm glad you're doing okay. I'm doing okay. Yeah, that's, that's good, man. Uh, a few more things. People have been wanting to see you face either or Plant or Benavides. Uh, regardless who wins, uh, would you say like 
within the next year that's the guy you want like obviously get get a fight in to just see how you are but then go into with the winner of this fight sure why not i'm gonna try me in the world at 160 and uh but you told me a few months back that uh, you're not it. sure yeah like you weren't sure about 160 like you like the prospect yeah, yeah. Um, mm -hmm. i like to fight that catch right yeah you want to fight me you gotta fight me so just get it you know I'm a champion of the world for a reason. And everybody in the world will get a chance to see like what it really feel like to you know, get a chance. Do you I guess how would you counter uh, a lot of fans are picking Benavides to be planned by knockout and by like brutal knockout. Why are they wrong in your opinion? Uh, you know, styles made fights. I don't feel like it, I don't feel like it's a 50-50 fight for either one of them. So like, one, uh, this, David gonna be there. David been a bitch ass. Why? He's David been a bitch ass. Why? Oh, no, that's a <laughs> <laughs> nah, but uh, congrats to David Benavidez and his family and everybody, you know, like, I've been talking I've been talking about, like yeah, we're going to fight, yeah. we're going to fight, if he want to fight me, we'll fight, but it is what it is, you know, uh, um, the best men win, whoever train harder, win a fight, and then they move on to, like, greatest standards. They might overpass me and look, overlook me, yeah? honestly, after this fight. Like, it's such a good, great fight. Like, I might just got to work my way back up to them. Like, hey, the you channel. know, I mean, I, yeah, I might just still have to, you know, go uh, show. Yes, Zaga, Yaga, you know the vibes. You rocking up with your truly Showtime sizzle. That was audio from the Fight Hub interview with Jamal Charlo. Man. Good to see him back in the public's eye. You heard his demeanor. He's looking for a fight with David Benavitez. Been going through a lot of things outside of the boxing ring. Um, mental health is big in the fight game as well as in life, period. So it's good to see that from the interview as he was stating that he is okay and getting better um this isn't going to be one of those videos where i tear him down for the things that he was dealing with outside the ring because we all battle demons and distractions but it's hap i'm just happy to see the brother back on track and calling out names um he wants to fight david benavitez he wants to fight Caleb Plant, he wants to fight Demetrius Andrade and I believe and this is no slight at him but I think right now reality is setting in he's older um, his career is on the back nine um, he is a desperate lion um, and when I say desperate I don't mean it in a bad sense I just mean it in he has, he's been out the ring for almost two years. Even though he's a champion at 160, he's been an inactive champion. A lot of younger fighters are taking off. You even heard him state this in the interview, that he might be somewhat forgotten. These are his words. That's why I want to play the audio. And all I'm doing is giving y'all his words and my reaction to his words um he sounds like a a man that's been through a lot mentally as well as physically um he didn't bring up nothing about his injury if you pay attention he did say he wasn't mentally prepared to fight as well as physically so for those of y'all that's really in the game and know anything about the game um, fighting is physical because you are getting in there throwing punches and that stuff, but it's also mental. So mentally, if you are not tapped in, especially at the level that he competes at being a world champion, you should always mentally be there. I know you guys was expecting something totally different from me that I was going to bash this brother, but no. 
I am happy to see him turning that table and trying to get back in the ring and fighting these top guys because that's what we always wanted from him. We always wanted to see him fight. When I say we, I'm talking me. Flip the W over to M, me. I wanted to see him fight the top guys. So when I questioned him, it was because to me, he was not fighting the best. He was just, you know, he was a uh, veterinarian. You know what I'm saying? To me, to be a, a lion. And if you know, lions are carnivores. They're meat eaters. But to me, he was a, he ate a lot of plants. No pun intended, Caleb plant. But he ate a lot of plants, tomato cans, uh, cherries, things of that nature. Hopefully you are catching the sauce. But we have to see what happens for him. Glad to see him back in the public eye. Another key thing that he said, no entourage. He was dolo solo. Feel free to uh, share your thoughts. I told you that we are spicing the sauce up. Once again, the audio from this video, Fight Hub TV interview with Jamal Charlo, Future of Boxing. That's all I got for you. Hit the bell icon on your way out. Smash the like button. And so you also get the notifications whenever we drop the sauce. Zaga, Yaga, you know the vibes. Ahala. Brand them and do your own. I'm so excited. Cool. Shout out to my boy Showtime, man. The stuff, man. What's going on, big dog? Shout out to Shot. Yeah, yeah. Shout out to my boy. Yo, man, it's your hot Tucker, man. The real goat. LeBron Donner, the game, man. Shout out to the Source Talk Podcast. Shout out to my man Showtime Shot. If you ain't know, now you know. Hey, everybody. School you. Yes, right. School you. <laughs> Hey guys, this is Tiana Tuma Hiloa. I'm a top ranked Hello. knockout, and I want to give a shout out to Sauce Talk Podcast. Thank you, you know the vibes.